one of the things we've done in my in our district, and of course, is to Southern Company's uh, credit, uh, we've got Plant Vogel uh, first units three and four. Unit three is fully operational and online, uh, but it's been over thirty years, and Unit four is coming on uh, uh, next year. Uh, we know that nuclear energy is clean, reliable, affordable, and um, we know that over a period of time, the uh, it, it, it's very efficient. Um, Department of Energy says that Vogels 3 and 4 will generate more than 17 million megawatt hours of clean energy and prevent 10 million metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. Mr. Mills and Mr. Menendez, can you speak to the importance of these new units at Plant Vogel and uh, as well as uh, uh, looking at additional nuclear uh, possibilities as far as reducing emissions and uh, uh, increasing in, in this increasing demand for electricity. And Mr. Menendez, you could go first, and then Mr. Mills. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I agree with you on uh, the, the use of nuclear for emission-free uh, dense energy over time. With respect to in the United States, uh, however, uh, Vogel, uh, because uh, Southern Company uh, is uh, not in a bid-based electricity market and is in a regulated uh, utility, uh, that <clears throat> that plant is going to be hard to replicate in our bid base electricity markets. It's very, very difficult in the United States for price formation at FERC uh, to allow uh, a plant of that size in any of the other RTOs. So that's something the committee should look at. Uh, and so as a consequence, uh, the industry is moving to small modular reactors, actually, not of the size of Vogel, different technologies. And we've seen that there's some exciting opportunities here in the United States, although New Scale recently, uh, you know, uh, pulled out of their project uh, uh, with UAMPs, or UAMPs mm -hmm. pulled out, which caused new scale. To right. go. But, but the future of nuclear is great. We see globally the acceptance, really, of nuclear more than we do in the United States, for the aforementioned reasons. It's just very mm -hmm. difficult to be able to place and build now uh, in the bid-based markets a nuclear facility. I'd just like to reemphasize that the challenge that the nuclear industry has is essentially a structural regulatory, as Mr. Menendez has pointed out. Building big reactors is what we know how to build, and we need to build a lot more of them faster. I think France will do that. Sweden's going to do it. The small reactors don't have a regulatory problem as much right now as the technology timeline problem. It'll take some years to build enough of them to know how they work and how to build them at scale. I'm sure it can happen. A different, a different incentive structure is required for that, and I, I see very little evidence of that being put in place. Well, there's really no incentive from the federal government to build these. In other words, it's disincentive. In other words, the larger the regulatory impact, you know, it's hard to raise the capital to build these things. And like you said, uh, because of our situation there, Ms. Eversor, your testimony talked extensively about how the late 2000s private sector developed fracking and horizontal drilling in unlike vast quantities. Uh, can you discuss how lifting the oil export ban allowed the U.S. to wield more influence and, and really drive this economy? I certainly can appreciate the question. Look, I mean, we have had an incredible influence on stabilizing the markets as a consequence of lifting the oil export ban in 2015. Um, production increased by a total of 1.8 billion barrels of oil as a consequence of lifting that, uh, that ban. We see roughly an increase on an annual basis of 48,000 jobs as a consequence of this. Um, and we've helped to rebalance the trade deficit um, in our favor by $178 billion. Yeah, and these are all, poor, I mean, to have a successful economy. And, of course, with government spending, um, we spent trillions of dollars uh, on this of late. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 